Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung, and today we're going to go over the metabolic syndrome, what it is, and how it's a disease of too much sugar. And it's coming right up. The metabolic syndrome is a cluster of five things that we measure uh, very commonly in medicine that all seem to go together. And these five things are one, visceral obesity, defined as a waist circumference of greater than 40 inches for men or 35 inches for women. Number two, high blood glucose or type 2 diabetes, uh, whether it's high or you're on medications. Number three, a high triglyceride. Number four, low HDL or high density lipoprotein. And number five, high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. And because these five things all seem to cluster together, that is, if you have one, you're likely to have another, it suggests that they really have a common cause or a common etiology. And that is too much sugar, which is also known as hyperinsulinemia. So let's go over these things one by one. In my book, The Obesity Code, and in a lot of these lectures on YouTube, We've gone over how carbohydrates can lead to high insulin levels because that is the food, the macronutrient, that tends to raise insulin. And insulin is a hormone that simply tells your body to store calories. And one of the ways it stores calories is as body fat. So if you have too much insulin in the body, it's going to lead to gaining of weight or obesity. Fructose, as we've discussed in a previous lecture, tends to cause this fatty liver, which causes the insulin resistance, which leads to high insulin levels, which leads you to weight gain. But it's not simply that weight gain, it's that it tends to deposit in the abdominal area. And this is because we know that there is de novo lipogenesis, which is the changing of those carbohydrates into fat when you have too much because fat is a storage form of that energy. The liver takes that carbohydrate, which is in excess, turns it into fat, and the first place it deposits is within the liver, but also within the abdominal organs. And that's why you tend to get visceral obesity as opposed to overall obesity. And visceral obesity is measured by waist circumference and you see it when people have a disproportionately large belly. But the other thing that we know is that as the liver generates all this uh, extra fat, it doesn't want to keep it because the liver is not where fat is supposed to be stored. Fat is supposed to be stored in fat cells. So after de novo lipogenesis, the body tries to get rid of those excess fats. And those are called triglycerides. And the liver pushes the triglycerides out as VLDL, also known as very low density lipoprotein. And this transports those extra triglycerides into the fat cells, but also into the other abdominal organs. And that's what leads to the high triglyceride levels that we see. The insulin is also inhibiting lipolysis so that your body isn't able to burn those fatty acids. We see this very clearly in animals, for example, in the, when people are making foie gras, they deliberately overfeed these ducks and geese carbohydrate rich mash, and that creates this fatty liver, which then they harvest. But we see it in humans as well. If you look at the NHANES study, which is a large study of um, Americans, you see a clear relationship between the amount of added sugar in their diet and the level of triglycerides. That is, if you're eating more sugar, you're gonna have higher triglycerides, and that is one of the key features of the metabolic syndrome. The high triglycerides then leads to a lower HDL because these high triglycerides activates something called CETP, or cholesterol ester transfer protein, which then lowers your HDL. That is to say, when triglycerides are high, your HDL tends to go down, and that's a third component. In addition to the visceral obesity and the high triglycerides, that is a third component of the metabolic syndrome. 
And once again, in the NHANES study, you can see a clear correlation between the amount of added sugar intake in the U.S. adults and their level of HDL. That is, as they eat more sugar, they tend to have a lower HDL. So we can see from our schematic here that not only does the high sugar, that is both glucose and fructose, and the high insulin levels, or hyperinsulinemia, lead to the visceral obesity, but the high triglycerides and the low HDL. What about blood pressure? Once again, the high insulin levels can also cause high blood pressure. And that is because there are multiple mechanisms. The insulin tends to cause the body to retain water. And as you retain water, it is like an overexpanded balloon. It's going to keep that water, but the pressure inside is going to be higher. So in this prospective study, when they looked at people with high insulin levels, and these are quartile four, with the highest levels of insulin compared to quartile one, you can see that those people are going to have a much higher risk of developing high blood pressure. In this uh, case, uh, almost double the risk of high blood pressure. And once again, in that NHANES study, you see that those people who are taking the highest levels of fructose, or that sugar, are going to be at the highest risk of high blood pressure. And in um, US adults, what they find is that if you lower sugar-sweetened beverages by uh, you know, first, second, and third quartile, the more you reduce the sugar-sweetened beverages, the lower your blood pressure tends to go. So once again, in this schematic, we see that the high insulin is going to lead directly to the high blood pressure. And those are actually the five things that make up the metabolic syndrome. That is the abdominal obesity, the high triglycerides, the low HDL, the high blood pressure, and then the insulin resistance, which causes the high blood glucose. And we've talked about this many times in the past. It's really the insulin resistance and the hyperinsulinemia. Those two are really the same thing, sort of two sides of the same coin. That is what leads to the overflow of glucose into the blood. When the blood uh, glucose goes up, that's how you diagnose the uh, type 2 diabetes, but in this case also the hyperglycemia or high blood glucose. So the, those five things which all go together are really caused by the same thing, hyperinsulinemia. There's too much insulin in the body, but remember insulin is just a normal hormone that is produced. The question is why those insulin levels are too high and it comes back to the diet because insulin is a uh, hormone that is responsive to the diet. It's a nutrient sensor. It senses the presence of nutrients. If we are giving it too many nutrients, then our body's going to respond by increasing insulin, which is a sensor. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.